chances are good that if I use the term machine learning to you, particularly a few years ago, you'll think of Skynet, the thought of a neural net processor capable of learning at an exponential rate and threatening to either doom or enslave humanity. Of course, the reality is that, well, artificial intelligence and machine learning have a massive number of uses in modern society. Everything from predicting search results when you're trying to Google something to uh, helping predict uh, your shopping habits on Amazon and recommending products. And, of course, more fun anyway, is video games. I've already at length discussed NVIDIA's DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling, both in an article as well as a video. I'll link them in the description of this video, but I do want to go over them very briefly so that we've got a basis of which to start the rest of this video. Deep Learning Super Sampling, in a nutshell, utilizes training and inference. Training, as the name implies, is where you're training a neural network. In NVIDIA's case, they use supercomputers outfitted with multiple high-performance GPUs and clusters of CPUs, and then it uses a high-resolution reference image at, say, 16K. And then the neural network will do its best to upsample a low-resolution image to match the quality of the high-resolution. As you can imagine, the process takes a long time with tons of failures, thousands of failures most likely, as it tries and tries and tries, and eventually it gets damn good at it. Eventually this trained code can be used on your home GPU, known as inference. And the train code doesn't really require that much computing power, at least comparatively, to run. So that's why it's able to run in real time on something like an RTX 3080. Oh, I almost forgot, this is also an article too, so if you prefer the written word, you guessed it, you can find it linked below in the description of the video. Why am I mentioning DLSS and machine learning? Well, there's an awful lot of discussion right now as to the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5 and their native resolution, like what games are running at native 4K. But if you look at the list of things that people want the next generation of consoles to accomplish, we'll discuss PC GPUs too, but let's focus on consoles just for a moment, the list is pretty exhaustive. We're looking at the uh, desires of 60 FPS, ray tracing of course, and just better traditional rasterization effects and graphics compared to the previous generation. Ideally, multiplayer games and fast action games would run at 120 or at least have the ability to run at 120. And that is very much a lot of stuff to ask for a system which in the case of the Xbox or the PlayStation 5 is retailing for just 499 US dollars. Let's compare the Xbox Series X to the Xbox One X as they are actually a really nice comparison point because the GPU in terms of T-flops, the MLR T-flops, is twice as much. So the Series X uh, is outfitted with 12 T-flops and the Xbox One X is outfitted with 6 T-flops. We'll ignore the rest of the system just for a moment, like the CPU and memory bandwidth and all of that. Now, if you were to look at this in a very black and white way, 6 is half of 12, so you can say that the Xbox One X is half as powerful as the Series X, and of course, that is completely and utterly rubbish. The reality is much more complicated and much more nuanced. The Xbox Series X utilizes a much more advanced architecture. It utilizes RDNA 2 compared to the basically a Polaris-based Xbox One X. If you look at these uh, benchmarks here, you can see the difference of RDNA 1 and Polaris yourself, even with a similar GPU configuration. Which would you rather game on? However, if you were to measure the T-flops, they are identical. But, of course, RDNA 1 is considerably more efficient. So, thankfully, both Sony as well as Microsoft have numerous architectural efficiencies uh, on their GPU and the rest of the system, which improves performance much more than what the T-flop figure would lead you to believe. In the case of the Xbox Series X, it has DirectX 12 Ultimate, which allows technologies such as variable rate shading, mesh shading, 
um, and hardware-based ray tracing. With Sony's PlayStation 5, it utilizes hardware-based ray tracing as well as the hardware-based geometry engine, which is a specific block that Sony have designed for the PS5. It allows exhaustive control over the uh, GPU, much like mesh shaders, but at a hardware level. The long story short, and I've very much gone into depth of um, DirectX 12 Ultimate, uh, in a previous video, so I'd encourage you to check that out, as well as a hot ships breakdown of Microsoft's conference for the Series X, is that the rendering pipelines of these next generation consoles is considerably more efficient than what we've seen in the past. And this is, of course, incredibly important to achieving what we demand for the next generation of games. But, while all of those technologies are great, and they are, of course, incredibly important, culling um, objects in the rendering pipeline super duper early saves a lot of time, for example. But the, I hate to use the term, holy grail is to render something at a much lower resolution and then upsample it after the fact. Consider this, 1080p is one quarter the resolution as 4K, so you're looking at 3840, by 2160 pixels versus 1920 by 1080. So it makes an awful lot of sense then that what we want to do is up sample the lower quality image up to the highest quality. Compare the RTX 3080 here with DLSS versus native and you can see yourself the difference in performance when DLSS is being utilized. What does this mean? Well the image is being rendered at a much lower resolution, and then machine learning does its magic, guessing details, filling in details like blades of grass, characters' hair, facial details, world geometry. But just as important though, because ray tracing or other more traditional rasterization is occurring at a much lower number of pixels, frame rates are higher. To put it another way, here's a photo or gameplay of Quake 2, not the RTX version, running at 4K. So I ask you, does Quake 2 look better running in 4K than a modern game? No, of course not. Because the number of pixels aren't the only criteria we look for when judging the quality of a game's visuals. The number of triangles in a scene, texture and lighting quality, physics, how objects react to the game's world. Even running Quake 2 with RTX on, so this is full path tracing in the scene, Unlike most ray tracing enabled games which use ray tracing along with the traditional rendering pipeline, hybrid ray tracing if you will, it can only do so much to improve Quake 2's visuals. Yes, it does look a league better than the title we saw released in the 90s, but it certainly cannot compete with Control or any other game which really pushes the visual boat out. Perhaps this is enforcing that native resolution isn't as important as high quality pixels providing there's an effective manner to upsample the image. Gamers still continue to hold on to this, in my opinion, outdated notion that native resolution is the be-all and end-all, particularly true in the console space. AMD recently have confirmed that RDNA 2 also has upsampling technology, matching, by the way, my own leaks. And this will be achieved on the uh, RDNA 2 architecture thanks to Fidelity FX Super Sampling. This does work on any RDNA 2 class GPU. AMD have confirmed that it of course works on all PC RDNA 2 GPUs, so RX 6000 series, as well as the Xbox Series X, as well as the PlayStation 5. This is not to say it's the only method of upsampling, Sony and Microsoft are very much free to choose to go their own route and uh, create their own uh, uh, bespoke methods. But of course, this is an easy method for games developers. They know that if they use this, it's going to work across different platforms with no fuss. Almost certainly, it's using either 4 or 8 bit operations on the GPU, since AMD's cards do not have tensor uh, cores like NVIDIA's, but we'll get more onto this in just a moment. Microsoft have been heavily invested in machine learning direct ML for some time. And from what we're able to piece together, the efforts of AMD, Sony, and Microsoft are all starting to put uh, come together. 
With this Microsoft conference, you can see that the frames are being upsampled from a lower resolution in Forza. The discussion for this is rather technical, but I'll link it in the video description. But it, and it also dates back to when the Xbox Series X was not even released it was a couple of years ago. But the basic gist of this messaging is clear. Save performance, crank up the quality of each rendered frame, and then use upsampling technology to improve the visual quality. But let's also take a look at some other games and their performance, Watch Dogs Legion and Control. There'll be more comparisons and analysis coming soon from me on the consoles, but these two titles are very good examples of how the game is very demanding for next generation of PC and console hardware. The Series X version of Watch Dogs Legion uses a custom set of settings which are not available on the PC version, at least as default. But with a series of settings could best be described as a mixture of higher PC settings in general, albeit with the ray tracing set to medium, more liberal uses of traditional rasterization techniques uh, for reflections to save performance and limiting the number of bounces per ray. We also know that the um, game is rendering ray tracing at just 1080p utilizing checkerboarding to upsample to 4K. This, by the way, is the same for PC as well as console. And furthermore, console versions too hold back on things such as high resolution textures. And as you've been able to figure out by now, Watch Dogs with the ultra high quality settings is particularly demanding, particularly with ray tracing enabled. So DLSS makes this title actually playable. And Death Stranding, which is already pretty well optimized for PCs, can run at insane frame rates when using DLSS for high-end cards. But lower-end GPUs are perhaps even more benefiting of this, because you can actually pump out decent frame rates while having image quality which looks imperceptible to 4K. This means that gamers on a budget don't have to sacrifice quality for frame rates. But this is not the end of it. Machine learning is capable of so much more. Microsoft's teams are currently investigating upsampling textures. So a game, for example, would ship with much lower quality texture, and then in real time, virtually, you would see the game actually upsample. Microsoft's internal teams are having great success with this currently, and it has a plethora of benefits. The obvious one is it reduces games install sizes. With games now hitting 70, 80, 100 gigabytes plus, imagine having textures which are considerably smaller, but then upsampled to no perceivable loss in quality. That would be amazing. It also has other benefits too, reducing the amount of memory bandwidth needed and the amount of VRAM for storage of, that, of those textures. Again, these are all benefits for not only games developers, but also for us as end users. Reconstruction and um, upsampling are nothing new, and neither is machine learning. But we are in a situation now where it is required. The research into it has never been as strong as it is now, and no matter how powerful Sony, Microsoft, or GPUs vendors create their hardware, there's a finite amount of resources that hardware has, and smart usage of it is just required. Consoles need to use the same CU for running the upsampling code. This is either on 4 or 8-bit operations, much like RDNA 2 class GPUs for the PC. Ampere has tensor cores and ray tracing cores. The tensor cores are what are responsible for upsampling uh, using DLSS and 8-bit operations. This happens largely independently of the SM, NVIDIA's version of the compute units. This is not to say that AMD's solution is bad or slow, and compared to rendering the game at a high native resolution, the performance gains for this upsampling are still very impressive. And uh, DLSS basically uses 8-bit operations, which is much like uh, AMD's GPUs can do. And uh, we know that, again, the Xbox is utilizing 8- or 4-bit uh, instructions for upsampling. So perhaps it's going to depend on uh, different games and how they utilize this. But again, it's very early days. And as of the time I'm recording this, AMD have not released full details of its upsampling technology. Native resolution is losing a lot of its meaning. 
We started to first see this really with the release of the previous generation Pro consoles, the PlayStation 4 Pro, for example, had uh, dedicated hardware to enable it to do uh, checkerboard rendering. And then since then, we've seen it become even more the case with Turing offering upsampling thanks to TensorCores, AMD now embracing this technology, both the Series X and Series S, as well as the PlayStation 5, all clamoring for this. And honestly, it's a good thing. I would much rather have an instance where the game is being rendered with much higher quality pixels, much higher frame rates, but just as importantly, it's upsampled to uh, match the native resolution of our screens. And I think that this is a tremendous thing, and I really look forward to seeing what all companies, Microsoft, Sony, uh, NVIDIA, uh, AMD, and also Intel, presuming we can see that technology as well on their uh, upcoming GPUs, will be capable of with games developers working alongside of them. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. The normal stuff, if you did, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And of course, you can also find us linked down below on social media, as well as our Patreon. If you feel like donating, that would be amazing. But um, I'm going to let you all go. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.